Hi, this is Celeste with Gulf Coast Bird Observatory, and today I'm going to tell you how we take care of all of our hummingbirds that visit us on the property. We have lots of hummingbird feeders on the property, and we change them out every few days. In our hot and humid environment, after about three or four days, the sugar water starts going bad and can actually be harmful for the birds if they drink it, so you definitely want to change it out uh, frequently enough. If you live in a colder place, you might be able to get away with changing it more infrequently, but if you see it getting cloudy, that means it's going bad. So this is a good example of a good bird feeder. Um, the reason that it's good is that it breaks down into lots of pieces. Um, if it just broke down this far, it would be hard to clean because, you know, you can't get down into the place that holds the nectar and you can't get into these little notches. So this one breaks far enough down that you can actually get into those little nooks and crannies. So some people use vinegar to clean these, and I've heard of people using bleach. Um, both of those work, I think. Um, with the bleach especially, you have to really rinse it out really good um, after you clean it. I just use um, normal dish soap, that works pretty well. Again, rinse it after you're done and it'll be fine. Okay, and we use these uh, brushes that can get down in there. We also have this little tiny brush for the um, little holes here, um, yeah. This is how you clean a feeder. Uh, take your feeder apart into as many pieces as possible. Mold and bacteria will grow in any hidden spots if you don't clean it well enough, and that can be dangerous for the hummingbird. Um, you want to get into all those little nooks and crannies, um, the holes that the hummingbirds drink out of, and also the decorations around the holes. And if your feeder doesn't break down into small enough pieces that you can scrub it out really well, um, you can soak it in a solution of 10 to 1 water and bleach um, solution. And then after it's clean, you can rinse it out really well, get all that bleach out, um, and that'll be safe too. Now for the yummy nectar. We're going to do a 4 to 1 ratio. That's 4 cups of water to 1 cup of sugar. Um, I've heard that some people do different ratios, especially during migration, they might need more sugar and I think that's okay. Just read up on it before you do it um, and decide if you want to put more sugar. Some people heat up the water before they put the sugar in. Um, a lot of people actually boil it. We just heat it up a little bit or use hot tap water. We don't use any red dye because that can be dangerous to the hummingbirds as well. You're going to want to stir it until the liquid is completely clear. Now you can put your nectar into the feeder or store it for later in the fridge. So we're going to refill this one. We have it outside so that you don't get your house and your floor all sticky with sugar water. And when we fill up our Hummer feeders, we do it um, not all the way because That'll take too long for them to eat. And in that time, bacteria is more likely to grow. Um, mold is more likely to grow. So we just fill it up a little bit and that'll give them the chance to eat it all. And none of it will go to waste. If you wanna bring in even more hummingbirds, plant some hummingbird friendly plants, especially ones with red tubular flowers. These plants attract the birds and bring them even more nectar. You can also plant more insect-friendly plants and not use pesticides. Hummingbirds' main food is bugs, not nectar, so they'll love your garden even more if there's more food to eat. If you want to bring in nesting hummingbirds, it helps to have spiders on your property, as well as soft plants like moss and lichen. These are the hummingbirds' nesting materials. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate kind of how hummingbirds make their nests, and different species of hummingbirds do this a different way. This is kind of just general. So uh, what they'll do is they'll get some soft um, moss or leaves, um, sometimes dead leaves, sometimes even mud, and they'll find a branch in a location that they like. And depending on what species, they'll either use a forked branch or a slanting branch. Um, so I'm going to pretend this is a ruby-throated one. They're just kind of on a slightly slanted branch and they'll kind of put their uh, nesting materials on there and then they'll use a bunch of spider web um, 
This is probably too much, but I wanted it to show up in the video. Um, and they'll use the spider web to attach it to the branch. And then they'll use it um, to kind of like pat down. You can imagine a female hummingbird kind of patting down all this nesting material into the shape that she likes. Um, she wants it to be kind of stretchy so that when the eggs hatch um, and the chicks grow, then they'll have room. And she also might put some lichen on there to camouflage it. And it'll stick to the spider webs. And then this is about the size of a hummingbird egg. We've got some pinto beans here. Um, they're very, very tiny and the nest is tiny too. And of course the hummingbird herself is gonna be tiny. So it's going to be hard to see, but that's about what it looks like. Now all that's left to do is enjoy your hummingbird visitors. From Gold Coast Bird Observatory, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you soon.